Alright, now let's continue to solve your state 5 over here, which is the relations of your 4a and your 5a is theft s is actually an isentropic process. So from your state 4, which is in this case is your state 4a to your state 5s is actually this isentropic expansion so since you are looking for your t5s so it is best to place your uh, unknown value uh, above and the one that you know down here so t5s over your t4a is actually p5 over your p4 k minus 1 over k so your t5s now is equal to P4A which is 755.5 Kelvin times if your P5 is actually equal to your P1 which is 101 kilopascal and that you have your P4 is equal to 160.4 kilopascal 0 0.4 over 1.4 and finally you get your T5S uh, which is equal to 662 Kelvin. Now, with the help of this isentropic efficiency of your low pressure turbine, you can solve for your T5E, which is this is work actual over work S is equal to CP uh, T4E minus your T5A over your CP T4A minus your T5S so cancel out the CP term this is equal to 0 0.8 then finally you will get your T5A is equal to 680.7 Kelvin so now we already have all the values of T except for your X temperature over here and the ratio of your X is actually this uh, effectiveness of your regeneration given over here so let's solve for your temperature X where the effectiveness is actually the heat in between temperature of your x with your temperature at 2 over with the one that goes out from your low pressure turbine minus with your t2a over here and it is 0 0.70 so if you really arrange that mathematical form you will have your tx is equal to 0 0.07 times with your 680.7 minus your 515.5 and plus with your 515.5 and finally it will give your dx is equal to 631.1 Kelvin so now you have already answers for your uh, intermediate pressure in part A. Now you are going to solve this part B where you are looking for your thermal cycle efficiency, which is the definition is work net over your Q in. And if you to expand this thing, your work net is actually summation of the work of your turbine minus with the work of your compressor over your Q in so your Q in is the one that uh, happens between your uh, T3 minus your Tx And since 
the work of your high pressure turbine is equal to the work of your compressor it will cancel one another so this will leave with cp t so cp in between because this high pressure turbine is equal to your compressor so left with you is only the low pressure turbine it happens between your 4a and your 5a so t4a minus your t5a and it is over your cp t3 minus your tx so you can cancel out the cp terms so finally what's left is Seven five five point five minus with six at zero point seven over with your T three is actually nine seven three minus with your TX it's six three one point one and if you want to left it in percentage so the thermal efficiency is equal to So now, in answering for your part C, what if right now this 70% uh, is actually 100% or it is in ideal condition? What will, what will be the new thermal cycle efficiency? So let's have a look over here. So when you have that 100% efficiency, your Tx minus your T2A, T5A minus your T2A is equal to 100% or 1.0. So now, your T2X is equal to 1.0 times with your T5A minus your T2A plus your T2A. In which, these two will cancel one another. And then your Tx will equal to your T5A, which is equal to 680.7 Kelvin. And so what happened to your thermal cycle efficiency? It is equal to your summation of your work turbine minus your work compressor and then now your temperature x is t5a so it is equal to over with 973 minus with your 680.7 times with your 100% and finally you will get your thermal cycle efficiency is equal to 25.5% now you can conclude that The difference between these two is that O sorry this thermal cycle of hundred percent minus if thermal cycle of seventy percent is actually equal to indifference so that's all in this video i hope it will help you in your understanding thank you